What's going on YouTube? It's Primitive here bringing you the second episode of Pokey Prep, the series in which I bring you tips and tricks to help your preparation and mindset to make you a more effective, optimal player. Today I'm going to be giving you the top tips and tricks to make sure that the days that you have tournaments you give yourself the highest chance to succeed and get yourself the best placing that you can get. So let's go ahead and get into the health tips. Now I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist, so I'm not going to go ahead and tell you exactly what you should be eating or you should be doing during the days of the tournament, but I can give you tips to allow yourself to go do the research to figure out what's going to be most optimal for you. You should be having a good clean breakfast that isn't filled with a bunch of sugar and caffeine as those are going to make you crash later in the day and it doesn't matter how good you feel at the beginning of the tournament and how well you perform at the beginning of the tournament if you crash hard and have a bad second half of your tournament you're ultimately going to have a bad tournament because your score is going to reflect and you're not going to be able to make top cut because you were just too tired you had too much mental fog and fatigue because you chose not to have a good breakfast that's going to give you clean optimal energy you should also have snacks prepared beforehand if you go ahead and plan out what you're going to have between rounds to help keep your energy up, you're going to have a much higher chance of avoiding fast foods or junk foods that are ultimately going to lower your energy levels and make you not feel as good as you could be. Obviously, you want to be drinking water and not soda. This goes back to what I said with the breakfast. You want to be avoiding sugar. This is going to lower your mental clarity, and it's also going to cause you to crash later in the day. You want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to perform at the tournament so you're not wasting your time and you're making sure that you're doing your best and getting the best performance you can. We're currently in the online era of VGC, which means that most players are playing from their home, which means that you could probably much easier get the optimal amount of sleep that you need to perform. However, when we go back to the live tournament, you need to keep this in mind. Many players will stay up all night hanging out with their friends that they've seen across the country, and trust me, I understand that. I love hanging out with my friends at real tournaments, but if you're trying to perform optimally, you need to make sure that you're going to bed early enough the night before that you get full sleep so that you're not groggy and tired for the remainder of the next day, ultimately ruining your tournament performance. So let's talk about how you should be spending your times in between rounds at real life tournaments. In between rounds, you should be doing things that are gonna go ahead and get your nerves level down, but keep your confidence level high. Doing things such as taking a break or relaxing are really great because it's going to let you calm down and refocus and get back to a neutral emotional level for your next round. Reviewing with your friends about your previous round and their previous round is another great way to keep your mind focused on Pokemon because you're going to be talking about the game, maybe the mistakes you made, maybe the things that went well, and it's going to keep you focused on the game and making sure that you're playing well your next round. Another thing is you could just enjoy a snack. Maybe if you're feeling hungry or your energy levels are going down, you could just have a small snack. I wouldn't recommend eating too much in between rounds because it may cause yourself to feel a little bit groggy due to digestion, but having a small snack is definitely a great thing to do. Now, let's talk about something that's a little more relevant to this current time. Spending time in between rounds during online tournaments. During online tournaments, there's a lot of downtime in between rounds, and you make sure that you're doing activities that are not going to hinder your performance going forward. You don't want to be doing activities that take up too much mental energy, so maybe going for a really hard workout is maybe not the best thing, and neither is just laying down and watching some TV. And most importantly, you want to make sure that the, whatever activity you choose to do in between round is not going to carry over into your next game. If what you're doing in between rounds is playing another video game or watching a YouTube video or TV show, for example, and you go into your next game thinking about how you lost your last game of Among Us or the TV show you were watching, your favorite couple broke up, those type of things are not going to help you if you're thinking about that during your game because it's going to be distracting you from playing and making you play faster, make more misplays, not fully focus on what your opponent could be doing, and as much as doing those other things have time and place, during the tournament is not the time because if you're distracting yourself, you're going to be hindering your performance even if it's just by a little bit. So let's go over a couple mindset tips because mindset is extremely important when it comes to tournaments. You want to combat negative mindset before you even go into the tournament by making sure that you have a goal set for yourself for that tournament. When you set yourself a goal for the tournament, such as making sure that you're taking optimal notes or making sure that you are not playing too quickly, these type of goals will make it so that even if you have a losing record when you're playing, if you're focusing on the goals that are going to help you get become a better tournament player, you're actually going to be progressing regardless if you lose. Yes, losing is frustrating and you're probably going to have a negative mindset anyway, but if at least you could have some area that you know that you're improving in, you can have some sort of positive light, which will make it much easier to get out of that negative mood. And when you're winning, don't get cocky. 
You can be confident, but once you get to that level of cockiness, it's going to hinder you because you're going to start to feel like you can't lose. But you need to remember that your opponents, when you're playing them in a Swiss tournament, have the exact same record as you. So if you're 5-0 and in a tournament, your opponent is also going to be 5-0, and and they're performing just as well as you. You are not guaranteed to win any match, no matter how well you play. You just need to make sure that you're focusing on the game, playing as well as you can, and giving yourself the best opportunity to win, and not thinking that you're going to win going into it, because then you're not going to be fully focused. And make sure you're not fretting over big names. Just because you're playing against the Joe UX9s and the Wolf Glicks of the world doesn't mean that they win every single game. Every single big name VGC player has lost many tournament matches to players who may not be considered big name. And if you're worrying about playing them before you even go into it just because of who they are, then you're going to be distracting yourself by giving yourself more nerves because you're playing a big name player. Every VGC player is human. Nobody is superhuman in this game. Everybody has a chance to lose this game considering that there are RNG chances. Every single person does make misplays. So when you go into a match, play as best as you can. Stay as focused as you can. You can be anybody you play if you play well enough. You just need to make sure that you're not hindering yourself by worrying about them just by their name. Now, one of the most important things you can do in a tournament is to reflect on it afterwards. By doing this, you want to take notes during your games and your sets, or even take notes after your sets, so that way you can review them afterwards. Doing so can help you figure out what areas you need to work on. If you notice that maybe your team was too weak, well, you can take notes on that during and after sets, and then after the tournament, you can go ahead and work on that team, fix the flaws, and improve it for the next tournament. If you realize that you're having gameplay flaws or mindset flaws, you can go ahead and post that out. If you're getting too tilted, you may need to work on your tilt problems. If you're playing too quickly, you may need to realize that you need to start focusing on slowing down. If you're getting distracted while you're playing and doing things such as watching TV or browsing social media while you're playing and you're noticing that's causing you to make misplays, then you need to start working on eliminating those distractions when you're playing. And those are just to name a couple things to show you what you could be taking note on when you're playing. Just figure out what's working and what's not working for you so you can take note. And that way, once the term is over, you can go ahead and review that, figure out the things that are not working for you, and find ways to fix it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Pokey Prep. I really hope you enjoyed. As somebody who's played in tournaments my entire life, I can guarantee you that having proper nutrition, proper preparation, and proper mindset when playing in a tournament is very vital for having long-term success and multiple repeated successes. If you don't have these things locked down now, don't worry. Everybody starts from somewhere and you have to just practice to get better and there's nothing stopping you from becoming the best player in the world at some point if you're making sure that you are optimally preparing and making sure that you are doing the correct things every single day to give yourself the best chance at winning. If you're interested in learning more on how to improve as a VGC player, I'll have all my contacts linked down below uh, where you can find my Twitch, my Twitter, my blog, all of which I bring lots of valuable VGC improvement content. If you're looking to prove, I would recommend checking that out, especially my blog where I have all of the other PokePred ep episodes if you would like to read them. If you're not interested in the text format, I will be bringing all PokePrep episodes here to YouTube over the next coming weeks. Regardless, I have many VGC improvement articles in there outside of the PokePrep articles to help you, and so I recommend you at least check out a couple and maybe get a couple ideas to help you improve your mi mindset or preparation. I will see you for the next episode of PokePrep, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.